Everyone, this is a woman who needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce her because she's always one of the coolest girls in any room, one of the coolest women in any room, the Brittany Allen. Oh, my gosh. You know her? You love her? You're wearing her? You're wearing her. You're wearing her? <laughs> Come on in. Is that thing on? I don't know if I'm that cool. There we go. But yeah, you're super cool. Fake it till you make it. Well, thank you, everyone, for being here. And Matt and the team, thank you at Austin Fashion Week for having us here. Because this is, we're kind of kicking it off. Yeah, we are. <laughs> no better way. <laughs> no better way. Well, you know, I have a, a whole bunch of, I've been doing some polling this week when, when I wanted to know more about Brittany. And there was a lot of questions that came in informally. Polling. Polling. Like when you take a poll. Oh. Yeah. Oh, cute. Yeah. What'd you find out? Uh, I have a lot of questions that we're gonna we're gonna get real. Well, I'm open books. So. We're gonna get real real with Brittany Allen. Yeah. Do you mind? No, real. Is that yeah. okay? Yeah. If it's too weird, then we won't. But... No, I'm an open book. Everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Can yeah. everyone hear Brittany? Because I know you can hear me, but can you hear Brittany? Can you hear me? Okay. Good. Great, great, great. All right, we're just gonna do a deep dive, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's after the show. Okay. Okay. So this is one of the, the first questions that came in. I think it's a really good one. Okay. You and your creativity all had to start somewhere, right? So take us back to Brittany Allen 1.0, because you're like 9.0 now, but take us back to 1.0 and tell us about growing up and, and how you progressed with design and how you got into all of this. I mean, I've honestly, I've been like a creative, I think, since I came out of the womb. Okay. Um, but fast forward, like, you know, as just your typical child, like crafts, arts, all the things. Um, I think my mom has like a little sketch where I'm like, I'm a fashion designer from when I was cool. like three. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that auction is later. I'm just <laughs> I don't want to see that. That was terrible. It's actually, yeah, I would have been eliminated on yeah. the first challenge had I <laughs> submitted that one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but actually, I went to the University of Arkansas for my undergraduate and I started as pre nursing. Yeah. Um, Designers are healers. I think we know that. They heal yeah. with their clothes. Also, it started like, another way. I am a people person, yeah. but also like I like to work with people in a different way, aka clothing. Right. Um, but I failed anatomy my very first year. I'm not going yeah. there. I'm just not Possible going reaction. there. Okay. <laughs> and so my counselor emailed me and was like, hey, let's have a chat. I'm like, okay. So I came in, sat down, and they were like, you have to pass anatomy to be a nurse. Like that's that's like kind of the baseline. Basic, yeah. yeah. So let's let's figure something else out. Okay. All right. So um, I took some sewing classes and I was like, oh, this is rad. And I loved it. And fast forward, that's I was like, this is fashion for me. So really, you did, did not discover design at the level that I was nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. When I So it wasn't an eleven-year-old sewing Barbie clothes or anything. No. Okay. Wow. Good for you. I did play Barbies and. Like I said, I, I was very much a creative child right. um, growing up, and I think, yeah. you know, problem solving, you know, drawing, like Absolutely. those types of creativity, but I didn't know that I wanted to, like, have a career in creative. Well, you got one. You know, because it's always like, you know, you tell your mom and dad, you're like, I'm going to be a fashion designer, and they're like... Mine was what are you going to do for money? So I got it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to make actual income? Yeah. Yeah. Your daughter, so, your daughter. Yeah. yeah. But she and she also has really great talent. She is very talented. So that's good. Okay, good part. Well, cool. All right. So, so as you were growing up, though, obviously you were a stylish person because you were attracted to this. Who were some of your sort of style icons, either that you knew personally or in the public world, pop culture? Mm, uh, so I, I was obsessed with Betsy Johnson growing up, which you could probably tell because. My whole style is kind of... Oh, by the way, can we take a break to look at your shoes right shoes, now? Shoes, honey, that, need a moment. Wow, well done. Which, oh, by the way, if everyone has not signed up for Ibel, they need to who's in this room. They're a partner of Austin Fashion Week. They are the great new social media company that's going to take over the planet starting right here in Austin. So Ibel, there's the Ibel crew over there, right? I-B-B-L-E, right? Everyone can go down on their phones the right end. now and Ibel, Ibel up. Ibel up. Yeah. Is that a new <laughs> it it is now. Yeah. But, but I would just think that being around the Betsy Johnson creative crew would be very inspiring for oh, you. Oh, it was. I mean, it was an awesome team, first off, but they, they were like a family yeah. right before Steve Madden came in and right. wrecked shop. But, yeah. um, and it was just like, it was very like loose. Like you could, I felt like my wardrobe was actually like watered down compared to what everybody else like wore. Like everybody was wearing like you the frilly stuff. And, yeah. Yeah. 
It was fun. It was really, really fun. I was like, dang, I wish I would have designed, like, applied for that design internship. But, no, I got to do that. We got you to where you are now. That's the important thing. Yeah. Awesome. Put some color and some champagne. Are you still at 11 a.m.? Like this? Yeah. I think we're going to raffle this off a little bit later. This quadruple Jeroboam. Yeah. Um, yes. Please. You are bound and determined to raffle this off. Someone's going to leave Someone's like, Lance, today. you're arrested because you know, that is not yes. yours to give away. Please. Thanks. <laughs> On the Swinney tab, please. Thank you. Um, so, all right. So, fast forward to Project Runway. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. We don't want to talk about what is, it. What's Project Runway? I know that little show, exactly. right? Where you. Kick what a butt. blip, right? Yeah. Oh, crazy. Tell us about the process of going, thinking, doing. How did it all work? Day one. You applied. I did. I applied. Actually, I applied. This is a crazy story. So I applied for season 17 okay. um, before it ever came back to Bravo. So yeah. this was when it was still on Lifetime, fresh off of the season 16. Yeah. Applied, went through the whole process, and essentially made the cast. So this was... Uh, like 2018, I think, late yeah. 2018. Yes. So I made the cast of season 17, um, which I had tried out like 100 years ago, but it was right out of like underground. I didn't know how to sew like anything. Yeah. Did you go to the open call or how did that work? Yeah, I just went to the open call and just took like a collection. They loved it and followed up and did all the interviews and it was great. Like, that was my dream. I wanted to So the original one, you, you original did that? The original one on Lifetime. Okay, right. Like where they did Downstairs, Parsons, Tim Gunn, Heidi, everything. Yeah. So um, like two days later, they called me and they were like, so we are actually, Project Runway got brought, bought by Bravo. Yeah. So it's going from Lifetime to Bravo. That also being said, it's a new production company, new casting company. So um, you're back to square one. You have to go try out with Bravo. It's like, ugh, kill me. So I did. And then of course I walked in there all cocky. I'm like, I made the Lifetime cast. So Bravo, you're stupid for not bringing me on. No, not really. But I was Have you met me? I'm Brittany Allen. Yeah, right? okay. just coming in like a bull in a china shop, you know. Um, but I made it to the finalists, like the final 20 something that they had to narrow it down. And yeah. they called me and they're like, this is the hardest question. This is the hardest call I've ever had to make. I'm sorry, it's not your year. And I'm like, I'm never doing this again, ever. Fast forward to season 18, they call me and they were like, oh, we want you to come audition. I'm like, wow. No. Why did you think that you didn't want to do it the, this, that, I guess it'd be the third time? It's just so much harder. Yeah. And it's such a process, like when you try out, the first thing is you're bringing in a collection and if they really, really like what you make, yeah. it starts with that, it starts with clothes yeah. always. So when you show your collection and they like it, then they say, okay, well, we'll take you to the next round and it's an interview, on camera interview. Right. Well then, after that, you wait two weeks to find out if you're going to LA for the finalist. Mm -hmm. And so they fly you out to LA where you're quarantined and you're doing all the on-camera stuff to see if you're you know, if you can do it, yeah. you, can, you can swing it. Yeah. Um, and that's like a, a few days, but you're trapped in a hotel room, not be able to trapped, see anybody else. Trapped in a hotel room uh, with yeah. other designers. Yeah, going oh nuts. My God. I watched so much Naked and Afraid, it's not even funny. Like, I'm so embarrassed <laughs> that I've made it through like six seasons of Naked and Afraid. Um, but uh, yeah, so I made it on did the did the whole LA thing and then after that it's yeah. you wait six weeks before you ever find out if you're on to the next you're round. Faster. So that whole thing is like three months absolute torture. Yeah. How did you deal with that emotionally? Because it's I mean it's a roller coaster. Um, did you meditate? Did say, you no I can't meditate. I'm like one minute in the meditation I'm like I have so much shit to do I cannot even do this. Um, <laughs> No, I did not meditate, but just yeah. staying busy is the only thing because you know, Create. as you start like, Kept forgetting about it, yeah. it's like time goes by a little. Well, did you kind of recreate what you had created thinking, oh, you know what, I need to do this instead, or this would have been better this way, or anything like that? No, I just kind of like, I, I tried to try new things gotcha. because I knew that if Project Runway came about, right. that yeah. there would be things that I didn't know how to do. Um, so I was just trying new things and like just building up that like creative, you know, juices or whatever. But yeah, I had, during that like three months, I answered a lot of spam calls um, because I didn't know where the phone call would be coming from. Uh, and it would be an unknown number. So 
Oh, that's just a hoot. That makes sense, because you never know. So how did your life change going there during and after? Take us on that journey, if you don't mind. I'm a lot faster at sewing. You know. Because of the time constraints. Yeah. You know, a lot of the designers, as we've all seen as, as, fringe, as fans of Project Runaway, you know, they take forever. A lot of the designers take forever. I'm thinking, didn't you just set a timer and do these competitions on your own to try yeah. and prepare? Yeah. You would think that they would. I mean, I was already that. pretty fast because yeah. of SCAD. Right. Um, and it's also like just making sure that you're knowledgeable, like know how to sew everything to where you're right. not getting, um, you know, you're not stumbling over it. Right. Men's suits. suits. Um, you only get that if you've seen my season. Um, but yeah, just, just trying to like prepare. Um, right. But I mean, it completely changed my life. Like it kind of gave me the exposure that I needed. And I do feel like while I love all other you know, 15 of my castmates, right. um, I do feel like I was in a small pool of people that took the show and, and used it to propel me forward instead right. of just sitting around and waiting for something to come to me. I started like seeking out all these opportunities yeah. and all this press and I was like, this is going to be it. Like, I'm not going to just let this kind of go to waste. Right. Um, so instead of just sitting around and be like, I hope magazines call me and newspapers. No, you got to get out there and like be aggressive. So yeah. doing that though, yeah. with the hard work, it was, um, so what do you recommend with that, with designers, our aspiring designers in the audience and fashion says, what do you, what do you recommend from a branding standpoint that, that work for you? Branding, yeah, itself. for your own um, branding. Like, don't, don't try to like look at what other people are doing, uh, what other brands, what other designers, what other creatives are doing out there. It's already being done. So if you're constantly comparing your work to what they're doing, yeah. there's not really a place for you because there's already a place for that person. So you really have to find like what can you contribute to the industry, whatever industry it is, graphic design or interior design or whatever find something that's like not being done and do it and that's probably the scariest thing because you're sitting there thinking like what if people hate it and like what if it's not perceived well and what if i'm taking this risk for no reason but if you're not doing that and you're creating things that have already been created right. then you're not really gonna see any progress exactly. yourself no so you've got to like really dig deep down to find out what you can contribute and what your design aesthetic is and take that and like run like hell with it yeah. and don't steer away from it and compare yourself to others because they're already doing their own thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's shift gears a little bit. One thing I've noticed in, in, in the very first collection of yours that I saw at Austin Fashion Week, you had this really amazing, we well, had a lot of amazing, everything you did was amazing. There was one that had, there was a, a gown that had butterflies as a theme all over it. In fact, we wanted to use it for some editorial and it wasn't available because I think it was loaned to someone else. What? Yeah, so you have butterflies as a theme that continue to appear in your collections. Can you tell us what that represents to you? Because I think it's, I think people want to know, and certainly your fans who are, are here and watching and listening, what is it about butterflies? Well, I mean, like if you don't want butterflies, then then you don't need to know Brittany Allen, yeah. basically. Okay. Okay. So, um, no, like butterflies have always kind of signified like, um, like a uh, yeah, metamorphosis, like Thank growing, you. Thank you know, you coming out of this cocoon of being a new person, but also it's a very big like signifier of, of feminine energy okay. and feminine growth and feminine strength, okay. um, which I love, and they're beautiful. So, um, I don't, I'm just very drawn to like how pretty they make the clothing, but also it's just, it's one of many motifs that I have in my collections. Like all in all, my clothing is supposed to just make people happy. So those motifs that bring joy and boost serotonin, like smiley faces and lightning bolts and done in like a cheeky way, it's just to kind of, you know, spark joy. Um, and you create your own fabrics. I, I don't know if yeah, a lot of people know that, but Brittany creates her own fabrics, and I think that's smart from a business standpoint and certainly a creative standpoint. Yeah. So where do you draw your inspiration when you're creating? Everything. Like, I look at music and what musicians are wearing. I look at pop art, landscapes. I go to exhibits, museums, um, listen to music, just look at magazines, everything. And the way that I work is... 
sometimes I'll buy like a bunch of fabric, like when I do my sourcing trips, like yeah. in New York or right. wherever, and I'll let the fabric kind of tell me what it wants to be. Okay. Um, I just recently like went to Red Rocks um, uh, with yeah. a few of my friends. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, and I did this like bodysuit, but I found that fabric first. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good, like just this head to toe bodysuit. So I saw the fabric and it told me what it, you know, wanted to be, yeah. I guess. Um, but also, I, you know, I'll just see something and I'll be like, oh my gosh, this would be a really good idea and I'll make it with whatever I've got. So that's so cool. A little bit of everything. So I'll tell us myself in one. Right. Don't pinch you in, right? No. Yeah. Okay. So tell us who the Brittany Allen woman is. Mm. Can you define her? Who do you design for beyond yourself? Yeah. Well, okay, so I'll start back up a little bit. Um, whenever I'm designing, I so I used to be ready to wear. Even before, right. like the show, before the show, a little bit after the show, I did ready to wear. And I just kind of realized that like, it's so competitive ready to wear. Like, you know, you go into the racks of Bloomingdale's and Nordstrom's or whatever. It's just, there's so many designers and there's so much cheap clothing. Yeah. And there's a lot of color out there like Alice and Olivia and Betsy Johnson. So I think that there was a place for me because um, I am a little bit different, yeah. but I had to figure out like where where I fit in because the ready to wear market is just so saturated mm -hmm. and it's exhausting mm -hmm. and it wasn't, I wasn't like feeling very rewarded. Yeah. Um, and then COVID right. happened. Well, so that affected your aesthetic and really everything. Yeah, so um, turns out everybody really likes comfy clothes. <laughs> um, so that- Boy, was, did you have some designs for them. Yes, wow. well I didn't know it at the time. Yeah. So at that, at around the same kind of like time frame, I started working with what is, um, she's one of my best friends now, but at the time, I had just been a, a Peloton member for like three years, I think. Um, reached out to one of the instructors and I was like, I need to dress you, like I'm just, I love you, I'm obsessed with you. And it was like one of the first DMs that I've ever gotten back, like she responded back. And I was like, oh my gosh, this actually does some work. work. Yeah. But we we laugh about it now. She's like, no, you came into my DMs with like, I'm, I've got a plan. This is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna work on. She's like, damn, let's okay, let's let's do it. Let's do it yeah. Um, but yeah, I just started working with her and doing just a couple. Started off with just a couple pieces, and then um, you know, I love doing textile design. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something to this like whole active wear thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started like playing with it, and it turns out that. People love it, and yeah. people are starving for exciting active wear. And unique and different and original. Like yeah, and don't get me wrong, do. I'm a sucker for some Lulu leggings and some, you know, athleta, but like, it is so boring. It is so boring. Like, all of it is just like solid colors, and it's neutrals, and it's a snooze fest. And if you're wanting to do something like being active and working out, I don't know about you guys, but it's already so painful as it is to like get up and work out and I just would rather die. That like the cute clothes make it more exciting, um, but people want cute clothes to work out in. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, maybe this is like a place where my aesthetic will be most appreciated. Right. And turns out I wasn't wrong. So I think you're Hardly making, ever you're making am, people but, happier by how you design. Yeah, I just want to make people happy. And I also want to, I always said that like with ready to wear, I wanted to be part of like, you know, your everyday closet, like you just grab it and you go to brunch. But it was more like when I looked at active wear, I was like, I really want to actually be a part of the wardrobe that people are using to like better themselves and make themselves feel better and make themselves happy. And right. just like movement itself is, you know, so amazing. Yeah. So I want to be a part of that and like sweating and. Yeah. It sounds like the Brittany Allen woman is Brittany Allen. I mean, yes. And I know you're not supposed to do that, but. Who says that? I don't, I mean, why not? You're your own muse. There's nothing wrong with that. I have a lot of muses. And also I have like a lot of my customers, I have a lot of outliers, which is exciting because that means there's something for everyone. Right. Um, and you know, and, and, fashion school, they're like, no, you need to pick one person, you need to pick this little narrow 10-year demographic, and I'm like, these rules are dumb. They are so dumb. Rules what, are dumb. Like, why right. can't I just design for rules. everybody and give right. everybody something and gotcha. just do it in every single print, so. So do you do new collections, or is it an always evolving 
ecosystem with how you design? Well, I've found that like big collection drops, like twice a year or yeah. three times a year, right. it's not sustainable. Okay. Um, Makes sense. You only have those like big drops to look forward to. Whereas kind of what I've, I've figured out with activewear is people kind of want like continuous drops, one every two to three weeks. New stuff. A lot. It is a lot. A lot of pressure on yourself. Yeah, but it's it's good. We have really really big product catalog, and it also, I mean, we are sustainable, so we are, I would say, pretty close to zero waste. We keep all of our scraps and oh, make wow. scrunchies Congrats. and stuff like that um, out of them. But so we're, we are sustainable, and we're we're made to order. And this whole idea of like Shein and Forever Twenty One and H and M, bless their hearts, like it's yeah. just. The pollution is absolutely disgusting yeah. and what goes not worn. So people understand that when they're ordering from us, it does take a little longer for your order to ship, but there's not just like a shit ton of waste going somewhere. Yep. It's getting wasted. It's, it's made for you. Um, and it was made because you ordered it. Mm -hmm. And that keeps our just trash at a minimum. Tell us about um, how, when you do design, like I, I noticed that you have like a lot of Pucci inspiration, a lot of 60s, like your butterflies, color. Tell us a bit more about that process because I think our audience members, our viewers here would really enjoy knowing more about how you really do a deep dive into that if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm just weird. <laughs> so I like weird stuff. Um, like I really wanted to do this like activewear with like all these little frogs on it, but I was like, no, let's just we'll, we'll get there. Let's just do the. Is that in the pipeline? I want to. Just Why little, not? Just little frogs. Why not? Who would buy that here? A lot of lot. Okay, I mean, eight, ten, twelve, like fourteen. Oh shit! All right, people's well, hands. Just coming tomorrow. Eight eight people people buy those just kidding. Twelve p.m. We're doing frog <laughs> athletic wear. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but actually, so I actually had a drop today at 8 a.m. Um, Congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you. It's called Miami, and I've just been like in this very like retro, like 80s Miami vice. Like how sick was that time of just like yeah, the black and white awesome. checkered floor yeah. with like the neon. Like, hello. Matt Sweaty. Matt Sweaty. Hello. Yes. I made him roll his sleeves down. So <laughs> it's just it thing. gives. It's just like so like Saved by the Bell by the beach. Like I love that. Vibe, because it's weird, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you know those like those white styrofoam cups that have like the ugly like turquoise and purple like. Yes. That is everything. <laughs> That's everything. Like I would put that on activewear if I could. So the new cupware. Cup yeah. Cup so that that was my inspiration. Yeah, that was my inspo, and I, I, I actually worked with an illustrator in the UK. He'd never done like textile prints. He only does like illustrations. Yeah. Um, How'd and you was, find that person, just from a resource standpoint? He does a lot of work with RuPaul's Drag Race contestants, like okay. does all their merch. Yeah. And so I was like, do you want to do a repeat print? And he's like, no. I'm like, I'll, I'll teach you how to do the repeat part. Just, I would love for you to draw all of it. Um, well, how did you source that? It is unreal. When you see it come out, like, when you see it, it's just an exciting colorway, essentially. Um, but we, I want you guys to get close to this textile because of all the little pictures and illustrations that well, he's drawn in it. Is that yeah. Y'all want to see some Brittany Allen designs? Ah! Heck yeah. <laughs> you I thought that they were already walking around. That's how like dad was like, where's the girl? <laughs> I want oh, to see, go. it's oh, this different. Like, different Tell us about your inspiration stuff. for this. Well, this is actually my very first print um, and Monarchs for everything. I was in this like, very big butterfly phase, but I feel like that's like the like that's like the poster child, the monarch, right? Of butterflies. Like when you think of butterflies, you think of monarchs. Absolutely. Um, and then like that whole like monarch migration. Have you ever seen videos of that? I sure have. It's that's insane. Long. Yeah. And this is hot. Yeah. This is like one of the signature pieces that will probably never retire. I don't. And they look Just do really it in like new right? styles. They look really comfortable. Oh yeah. Right? Okay. So this is a, another a, a one piece, right? No, it's bra and legging. Oh, it is. Okay, mm -hmm. I got you. And this is like this is one we did after because I did the monarch print and I was like, oh, that's so beautiful. But what if we had a print that was like all mm -hmm. different? Absolutely. Um, don't grope the models, but if you want to touch the fabric, go for it. I touch that. That's really cool. That's cute, right? Yeah, really fun. Mm -hmm. Looks comfy. Absolutely. But it, it was—it has a little of every color in it, and 
Awesome. All sort of flies. So when you're designing, do you ever reach like a brick wall and go, okay, I cannot do this anymore? Every day. <laughs> every day. Every day. Every day. When I get customer service emails being like, I placed my order five minutes ago, when is it going to ship? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Three of those are I'm like, <laughs> I quit. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm just kidding. Same one was giving up. Anyway. Do you not read the P banner on the website? Like, so how do you get out Carol, <laughs> chill out. <laughs> how do you get out of your head? How do you sort of restart? Um, oh, how cute is this little oh, neon this. number? Yeah, that's awesome. Right? I mean, this it's is different. very safe by the bell. I love it. Is it, it giving you the vibes? Well done. Yeah, heck yeah. Anything neon, sign yeah. me up. That's great. Yes, um, what, what did you What did you ask me? How do you get out of your head? Am I ADD? Yes. How do you get out of your head? Okay. Um, I don't. I don't. Like, just any other creative, like, I'm very self-deprecating and I second-guess myself. And, like, I, I my advice is, like, put those blinders on, like, you know, those those horses at the Kentucky Derby and stop looking at what everybody else is doing. But it's very hard not to do that. Um, but just... And those moments, like I just keep creating because once I have like something exciting in the works, I'm like, oh, this is why I do it. Right. This is very rewarding. People are gonna love it. Just remind myself why I do it. Let's talk about the business side because I think a lot of our folks watching and who are here today would like to know more about the business side of things. It's very, very difficult starting a line, a creating, it's dropping. It's the hardest a part of my entire job. Talk us yeah. through that, if you, or walk us through that, if you don't mind. Um. Well. So getting started, like my, my business is completely self-funded, which is really exciting. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, a lot of negative bank account days, but we made it through it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't take any money from investors. Um, I have my website, I have Shopify, and they have like capital programs, but everything else is just, it's, I didn't take, do, do a loan or um, credit. So I'm completely self-funded. So all of every sale that I make just goes right back into my business for growth. Um, but it's really, really, really hard. It yeah. is the thing that, that's why you hear of like 90% of clothing brands right. not yeah. making it, or designers not making it. Like they, they just can't, they don't want to do it, it's too much. But um, you have to, as like I'm a control freak, so I want to like have my hands in every single like little thing in the business, but it's very hard to do things all by yourself. So I, I have a team of seamstresses and about to, you know, outsource a couple other things like PR and marketing. We were talking about that. Right. Uh, and my customer service. That way I can like really focus on the creative stuff because yeah. you have to have help. But in the beginning, it's really, really hard because your time is spread so thin. And my days were like 20 hour days. Um, but it's you just, it's not like in school we had this like Life 101 class where they taught you how to file your taxes and what taxes that you file and when you file those and also how to create an LLC and become an S Corp or you know whatever liability attorney on retainer stuff like that. Nobody tells you about those things. Right. So it is unfortunate that you're going to come across problems that you, you know, pickles that you get yourself in and you're like, oh, wow, I'm being sued um, and I should probably get an attorney. And can I be my own attorney? No, I'm not getting sued. But just, you know, legal liability stuff. But um, you're going to, it's just, you, you only, okay, this is my perfect example. I can't even make this up. So um, I'm from Arkansas originally, um, and at the XNA airport, I think it was, we were going through security. And at, you know, the, like the x-ray machine where you put your carry-on in the x-ray machine and then you walk. On that x-ray machine, there was a big sign that says, don't put your baby in the x-ray <laughs> x-ray machine. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why this yeah. is funny. Yeah. They only put that sign up because someone tried to put their baby in the x-ray machine. Right. Yeah. Bad parents. Like all the signs and warnings on everything in, in the world, like it's only there because someone tried to do it. Um, and so I feel like with business, it's kind of like that because you're gonna, I mean, I, gonna there are things that surprise me every single day. Yeah. yeah, and people try to do that. So I have to put up signs, but you're gonna come across problems right. 
that you're like, okay, now I need to, to never, to avoid this ever yes. happening again, I need to do this. And then you're gonna come across a new problem and you're like, okay, to ever avoid doing this again, uh, you know, it's, you're gonna like fail awesome. a lot. Right. You're gonna fail a lot, but it's a growing, it's a growing thing. I mean, I'm only two and a half, three years in. Yeah. Yeah, and I just, I figured out like how the whole LLC thing works. Which is exciting. Yeah, and my new, yeah. my new attorney's name is Michael. He's great. Uh, <laughs> Adult supervision is what I call that yeah. for creative people. Yeah. I need it too. I get you. I get you. So, what advice do you have for our our, our audience and our, our followers? What advice do you have about someone who's really considering starting their own fashion line, like you have done successfully? Um, I think. No, this is not even trying to be funny. Like, it is not in any way, shape, or form as glamorous as it, you see, like on TV or, you know, Deborah Rolls Prada, you're like, this is the life. Um, but no, it's not, it's not as glamorous as you think. Like, this is the first time I've been on makeup in like a very long time. So, um, it's not as glamorous knowing, knowing that, like, it, it's the grind. Hard work, and yeah. yeah, I've like, I mean, it's, one of the hardest things that you'll ever do. Like I've been through some stuff, but it's one of the hardest things and it takes like so much like willpower not to just be like, this is, I can go work for the man and I can yeah. have that consistent paycheck and not have to worry about where my next sale's coming from, but it's not as rewarding. So knowing that the rewards come, it, it does push you a little bit, but m always my advice is the blinders thing. Like be, that Kentucky Derby horse, put on like those blinders and stop looking at other people's stuff because it's that. very, very nice. easy to compare yeah. what you are doing to other people. But again, if what you're comparing to is something that's already out there, then you're just creating something that's, right. that's already been done. Yeah. Like why not try to take a risk and contribute something that people are like, that's so weird. I don't know if I love it or hate it, but that's the emotion you want, right? A very right. strong emotion, not indifference. Yeah. Um, so bring something new to the industry, like take risks. That's really good advice yeah. for life and, and work and everything, yeah. right? So now we're gonna turn it over to the audience for questions mm. beyond these that they've submitted. So we'd like to open it up to the audience for questions for the Brittany Allen, ladies and gentlemen. Who has a really great question? Do you ever dream of brick and mortar? The question was, do you ever dream about brick and mortar? That's a good question. Not at all. I'll probably have to at some point. I hope that I grow so big that like I have to open up it, like a brick and mortar, but it's gonna be at the point where it's like, hi, I'm gonna hire you and I want nothing to do with this because um, I've worked retail, I put in my time, and you think customer service emails are bad. Carol. Carol, odd. <laughs> Carol. Carol's always my go-to, I don't know why. I think it's from Bridesmaids, whenever they're playing, um, is it Bridesmaids? Yeah, when they're playing tennis, she's like, ah, Carol. But anyway, so, um, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, I would love that, and I think I have enough products for that. We'd probably have to start working with factories, um, which I would always make sure that it was sustainable and clean and comfortable and everybody was being paid, but, like, wages, livable, livable wages. Um, but yeah, I, I'd love to, but I don't want anything to do with it. That's essentially two businesses that I'd be running and I barely can do one, so. Okay, and we have another gentleman in the bag. Yes, sir. So this, the question was, how do you self-promote? Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah. That's a really good question. We were just talking about, I need to get like a PR and marketing, yeah. um, but like these PR firms are like, upwards of like, three grand a month and it's insane. So you have to be really creative on like how you're putting yourself out there. Um, I mean, in this day and age, it's all about social media. Like my husband's like, why are you on Instagram? I'm like, I'm working. He's like, mm -hmm. why do you have something in your cart? Crazy person, you're so a psychopath. I'm like, it's fine, it's for research. Um, yeah. So, uh, social media, being media, really creative is, with social media. Awesome. Yeah, but like I'm, the Ipple folks are social media. Yeah. Right? They're and awesome. Like, a lot of, so, some of my castmates, like, they, we were talking, and it's like, we really, really want to have on social media, like Instagram, we want to have our brand page and we have a personal page. And I'm like, why? Why don't you just, like, why don't you just be yourself and put your stuff out there and promote your own brand and know that you're the face, like people will know that you're the face of the brand. Right. It could still be separate, but 
Did you it ever get feels, a clear answer on that? No, but I mean, so my following and my sales, so yeah. I'm kidding. You think that they would want to increase the chances of being yeah. consumed and followed and all of that? Yeah. Well, I mean, because every brand has a creative director or like someone that started the brand. Absolutely. It's not like you have to just completely go behind the curtains and act like you don't exist. Right. So I don't believe in that. That's I've just been very honest and I'm very weird on social media. If you follow me, I'm just oh, you're fine. I would yeah. say weird. Yeah, fine. I'm weird. It's fine though. Weirdly fun. Yeah. Okay. I like right. that a lot. Okay. Um, but I do that, and then influencers are the way to go now. I mean, like paying for Facebook ads, Instagram. It's absolutely just you just might as well like get on 35 and just like dump your wallet out the window. Those don't work anymore. So it's like influencers, like sending free products and be like, you know, share it and yeah. use the code. But I mean, How do you feel about if influencers are getting free stuff, then. There's a lot of great influencers in this room. Oh. As you know. I mean, they're great. They're awesome. I love them all. <laughs> I love every single one of them. They're my favorite people yep. ever. Let me know if you want free product. Yeah. No, I'm just um, I mean, sometimes you just, it, you, sometimes you get like a bad lemon, I guess, every now and then. Um, like you'll send a, a bunch of stuff and then you'll either hear nothing or, right. Right. you know, and it sucks because if I'm sending you like five money. sets, yeah. then that's over a thousand dollars worth of product that right. I just like lost, lost. Yeah. Um, and as a small business like that that hurts yeah. that really 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 hurts yeah. but then you get some people that you send it and they love it and they share it and then you've got 100 orders the next day right. so it just it just depends but like uh, I, I'm not the person that's like you need to pay for shipping and use this code and blah 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 just like hey here's this for you to enjoy like if you share it great I would love that and that would make my life because um, I'm a small business and your support means yeah. a lot to me um, and oftentimes, if you don't put just so much pressure on the influencers in your life, three Instagram posts and one TikTok, blah, 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 I mean, it just actually comes naturally. Like, they'll right. do something, and even if they don't tag you, people will be like, hey, where did you find that? Somebody will send a link, and then you've got traffic. So, it's its own ecosystem now, yeah. which is really interesting. Yeah. Design before it was much more word of mouth, it was more brick and mortar, to your point. It was just a whole different ballgame. Yeah. So it really seems like it works in your favor. Doing this without like Instagram would be like, no. Right, right. No chance. That's the new print. Oh, I love this. This is awesome. It's called Miami. Yes. Hey. Look at it up close. It's got like popsicles, yeah. skate, like it's got little awesome. skates on it, flamingos, and then like here, wait, come here, close. Come here. Come here. Um, it says right here, really close, is Britney's mixtape. Okay, that's all on a cassette tape. It's that's everything. fantastic. I love it's that. It's everything. That's very, you have very, laps. very fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And she wears it well, too. She looks really comfortable in it. Cute. Yeah. Super cute. Okay, uh, our next question. When are you going to make ready to wear? Which I think is a really good question. I did the act of, I'm doing the act of wear, but trying to take that and, like, translate it into ready to wear well, it's been interesting some active wear skirts today yeah so That's skirts uh, like pencil fish. skirts uh yeah. mini skirts those are easy just like to do ice spandex because they're really really comfortable but also yeah. like body con dresses um i'm about to launch body suits um yeah That's... i mean who doesn't love a good body suit I mean, are you guys are in building i'm like obsessed with body suits right now suits? because then i don't have to wear okay. underwear they love them over here <laughs> And we love them that they love them. That's yeah, awesome. I love body suits. We do body suits. Okay. Um, and we've done swim, Somewhere. but yeah. yeah, I need to do okay, a little bit more. Question. Okay. Okay. One more question from Kara. So the Wear question was: Can multiple body types wear your clothes? Uh, we've seen. Yeah, uh, we go up to a four X, but also I. Again, we're made to order, so yeah. if it's where you're like, hey, here's my measurements. Can you make this? We can make it in any size, honestly. That's great. Um, yeah. So. But the good thing is, it's like, so I've recently lost, I think over the past like two years, lost 60 pounds. Wow, 60 so, pounds, yeah, how did you do that? Peloton. Peloton? Yeah. God, incredible. And y'all are not gonna like this, but I gave up booze. This is the so wrong painful. audience to tell that. So thing. painful. I know, I'm like, oh you're gonna, like, oh you're gonna turn the corner and I'm like, <laughs> like drinking that whole entire champagne bottle. So um, you don't recommend that for everyone though? No. Okay. No, my sanity is like okay. a little bit. Got it. You know. Oh, this is um, fun too. Just real yeah. quick. I love the I love the mixing of prints. 
right? That's really Same. cool. Big, yeah, things that like don't go together, I love. Yeah, they just hey, that's life, things yeah. that don't go together, yeah. right? So I lost weight, um, but I mean, when I was a size 12, like, I, I loved my prints because they are very like busy very and they flattering. just bring, yeah, they just look so flattering on the body. And you don't have to be worried, like self-conscious about which part of your body that you don't love, right. which all bodies are beautiful. Absolutely. But even now, like as a size two, like I, I wear just different things, but I still right. love the same prints. And right. there's no body, there's not a body that could not make clothes. That's awesome. Yeah. Because that's not usually the case. Yeah. Well, with other line. So congratulations to you. you for that. That's Thank that's you. really important. That Thanks. that inclusivity is really important. Yeah, it's about time. Absolutely. So tell us about the body suits and what's inspiring you for that besides the seventies. Just my love for body suits and not having to wear undergarments whenever I wear body suits. Okay. No. Um I mean body suits like they just they're huge right now. Um, it's kind of like all encompassing little piece that's tight and you can wear it under like a legging or a skirt or jeans yeah. or You're whatever. Right. Yeah, and it's just like it's one garment, but it functions as like a whole, it's a whole thing. And it could be worn as a swimsuit too. So like all of our fabrics can be, like I've seen a few people um, that have tagged me like, you know, from Vegas, like, or Miami or wherever and have taken our pros and like worn them as like bikini tops. Perfect. Which is super cute. Yeah, yeah and it's not. perfect. Yeah, so it's, it's all like, you know, translatable across the board. How important is this relationship with your followers and fans and consumers? It sounds like it's really crucial to what you do. Does it help shape like the next drop? Do yeah. you get feedback? Tell us about Not that. Not on like prints and stuff, because I mean, my prints are my thing. Like that's the reason that I have kind of become like a recognizable brand because it's my vision and it's like all of these prints here yeah and solids exciting. as well um, butterflies polka dots yeah sparkles everything um, there's but something like for styles everyone. but any other pressing questions like other people pressing okay one more oh two, two more. more we got time absolutely so the question was entrepreneurially speaking what was your what is your biggest setback been this is a really good it's a really good question so some of you may not, not know this. Um, in 2019, I was on a flight um, from Los Angeles to Austin, and I had a stroke. I had a stroke, lost full, I was fully paralyzed on the right side of my body, had to make a full recovery. I did eight to, eight, like eight to 10 hours of occupational therapy, came home, started riding the Peloton to get my legs back. I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk, I couldn't sew, I couldn't write my name, I couldn't climb the stairs, I couldn't feed myself. My husband like literally would, feed me before. Um, I made a full recovery in six weeks. That's a big game. Yeah. yeah. Life. That was scary. That's super scary. Mm -hmm. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to come away. There's no way I'm going to come back from this. Right. Yeah. We but then also I woke up and I was like, this is not going to be my life. So that was probably just completely candid and transparent. That was probably my only suicidal moment that I've ever sure. had in my life yeah, because I was like, I'm not going to live like this. Yeah. Um, because I love to sew, and I was just kind of getting started, and I had, you know, was toying with this whole Project Runway thing, I was a finalist at the time. I hadn't gotten the show yet, but I was like, this is not, I can't, I can't work like this. Well, you cannot keep a good woman down, and nope. Brittany Allen, you are a very good woman. Thank you for all your talents. Thank you for being here today. Thank you to Matt and Austin Bachelor. We're so thrilled that you shared your essence I'm with us. You. And long may you reign. Forever. Forever, never. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> These shoes. Uh, All righty. Thank y'all, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your meal. Thank you.